Hi, everybody, and welcome to the Latino Pittsburgh Digital Speaker Series with the Pittsburgh Metropolitan Area Hispanic Chamber of Commerce. We're here every Wednesday at noon, but you can always visit any of our pages on social media and review some of the videos that we did before. So today we have a very special guest, Brian Taylor from La Mega Media. Welcome, Brian. Hey, thanks for having me. Yes, Brian, guys, he is the vice president of publishing um, with La Mega Media, and he is a dear friend um, of myself, the chamber, the community, and we're, we're just so pleased to have you here. Thank you for all that you do for the community, not only in Pittsburgh, but in, in other cities as well, and for joining us today. Thank you very much. And the most important thing about that is that we're just getting started. Uh, there's a lot more things that hopefully will unearth um, that will uh, help the community um, and businesses that uh, relate to them. Absolutely. Well, I want to learn a little bit about you personally before we really dive into La Mega. So tell us, what is your what are your Hispanic ties? Um, well, I grew up not realizing that I had any. Uh, but I started at a very young age um, speaking Spanish. I was put in a full immersion program uh, from elementary school on through high school. Uh, it was only and had always been, you know, a fan of Latinidad and the culture. Uh, saw it as my second culture and, um, you know, found myself always, you know, among anybody else I'd associated with, there'd be a certain percentage of Latinos in the room. And, um, yeah, spent time in Puerto Rico, spent time in Cuba, spent time in Spain, spent time in Mexico, um, and, and some other Spanish speaking countries, including Equatorial Guinea, which is in Africa. Um, but it was only when I was 30 that I realized that I have Puerto Rican roots at a family reunion. Somebody, uh, told me, you do realize that your great grandfather was Puerto Rican. And I said, no, I didn't. Please tell me more. That's where it started. Oh my gosh, that is so beautiful how you can just kind of like feel the Latinidad in you. You know, it's it's so funny. I, I I always feel the same way. Just this weekend, I hung out with a bunch of Colombians and I was like, I never feel as seen as I do when I, as when I'm in a room full of Colombians. <laughs> uh, no, so, awesome. so, Brian... How did it change after you found out that you were Latino? Did you research your roots? Like how, how did you kind of fall into that? Well, the funny thing is I can't say a whole lot changed. I still have to uh, trace those roots. Um, it's, it's work I haven't done yet, partially because I've been extremely immersed in this um, not new, but social phenomenon of police brutality has kind of taken a lot of my, uh, free time over the last seven years. Uh, so I haven't really had a whole lot of opportunity to uh, dive in like I want to do one of those uh, DNA tests. And, and uh, you know, my, a lot of my family that uh, was connected with Puerto Rico is deceased. Uh, so the couple of relatives I have don't live here who can uh, connect that chain for me. So it's still work to come. I look forward to learning more. But things didn't change much because I've kind of been very close with um, all kinds of political and social issues that have been taking place uh, in Spanish speaking countries for since I was 15, maybe. Um, so my studying of and appreciation of uh, Latino culture really, um, you know, people say after the fact, ah, it's because you have Latino blood, uh, maybe. But most importantly, it's just uh, it's part of the uh, it's part of the Americas. It's an important part for anyone to understand, no matter what ethnicity, ethnicity you are. And I feel like um, the path to really understanding who we are as humans, um, especially if you live in the United States, is to understand the history, um, you know, of peoples who are, you know, less talked about and have been less talked about. Um, you know, in this American epic uh, era. I could not agree more. I think it's so important. Actually, one of our first interviews for this series with was with Marisa Elvira. She wrote The Taste of Sugar. Have you heard of that book? I have. I haven't read it, but I've heard of it. 
you have to read it. It's really the history. It's just so rich. So I just I wanted to add that in. You were talking especially about, you know, um, Puerto Rican history, which is American history. Um, it's just really enlightening. Um, but yeah, no, that's just so wonderful to hear. And it's so interesting too now with all these DNA tests, I feel like a lot more people are gonna find out that they're Latinos and they had no idea. <laughs> yes, yeah, I mean, just given the nature of uh, what has been done to people around the world, there's just been a lot of, uh, you know, the I guess the, the, the positive outgrowth of that is that many of us have many different uh, cultures within us that may be undiscovered. So it's uh, it's it's a really cool uh, subplot to an otherwise uh, checkered past <laughs> that's taken uh, that, that's that's brought us together. Very well said. I could not agree more. Well, Brian, tell us tell us about your role now and what you do, and then I'd love to hear a little bit after that about how your education and your career kind of led up to that. Hmm. Well, my, so what I do now is most things that are, uh, anything that's printed um, and a lot of the um, verbiage or information that um, comes through La Mega Media, um, you know, comes through, I end up having an eye on it. Um, that's part of my responsibilities, uh, specifically the publishing program that we have, which includes La Mega Nota, which includes our digital uh, presence uh, on um, pittsburgh.lamegamedia.com um, or La Mega Pittsburgh. Um, you know, those, the contents that come from that, uh, I'm responsible for making sure are uh, commensurate with our general, um, not necessarily ideology, but our kind of our march towards being more helpful, informative and entertaining to the community. So that's those, that's my primary responsibility. It also includes making sure that, um, the papers that we print, uh, are delivered where they're supposed to be. Um, it includes, you know, making sure that, um, in the cities where we publish, the things that we publish are of interest to people who are reading it. Um, and then, you know, ensuring that we're able to continue functioning and are economically, um, positioned to, to carry out these tasks. Those are, those are really my central responsibilities. Um, helping to improve and train editors and writers is, is another uh, piece of that puzzle. I love that. There are so many things that you do. I think people probably don't even know the extent to which you're involved, especially in the community. Um, and that's one thing that I really like to talk to people about. La Mega doesn't just write stories or sell ads. You know, I think that you really work on making sure that the community has a voice. Um, why don't you tell us a little bit about you know, how the thought process came to make that a priority um, and how you do that every day. Well, so um, I just want to bring up this little historical point, because in the United States, I think in our in our current memories, you know, like that span as far back as maybe us or a generation before us recognize newspapers in the United States recently haven't been and I, I speak about mainstream newspapers, um, haven't necessarily been beacons of social consciousness, uh, community upliftment, uh, and so on. Largely because, um, you know, the more uh, in all forms of media, um, other things, we're told that other things sell better. Um, yellow journalism sells better. Crime sells better. It's easier to publish, you know, to take a police report and stick it in, in the paper than to talk about the positive developments that take place um, that often go, um, you know, not, you know, undiscovered or overlooked. Um, but especially in Latino America, uh, one can look at the role that newspapers uh, and media have played 
and sometimes they play principal roles as agitators, as um, uh, publications that really are of the people and that don't necessarily uh, color in the lines. Uh, we want to take a little bit of that tradition. Uh, we want to uh, go upstream, I guess you could say, um, in the direction that a lot of media has gone in and to focus what we do on highlighting the accomplishments that people in our community make, in highlighting the um, individuals and businesses who do things that are of use to the community. And to be that, not be that, but be a credible source for people to find out information, uh, not only about politics and heavy news and things of that nature, but also uh, to be a place where people can come find out where to hang out, be entertained, um, find out about what your team is doing, um, and to have features in it that are available for young people. Uh, younger, younger people, uh, kids to, to access. That, that's kind of what our part of what our mission is. And I, we think by doing that, um, you know, we become uh, a tool that is that can be used in various aspects you know, of our lives, from entertainment to information. Um, and when we strike that balance correctly, we really become uh, something that is uh, that's useful to everybody. And it's an ongoing challenge to make sure that that remains the case. And that's part of what my mission is, is to make sure that, um, you know, we stay or become, depending on how you see us, but that we we're, we're, we're constantly growing to be that thing I just described. You, you know, Brian, I really love that, especially the frame that you put it in and talking about how different groups, especially um, specifically Latinos, are portrayed in media um, and how it's just easier and it sells more. Um, and I think this is such a shift that we need in society in general. Um, so it's really beautiful that there are people out there like you pushing it towards, you know, towards the right direction. No, thank you. The fact of the matter is most of us are doing that, whether you're in the newspaper or not, if you work at a restaurant, if you, you know, are a teacher in a school, most of us are, are, are pushing that agenda that like, let's highlight the good parts of us. And it just so happens that I happen to be doing the same thing, but I'm in media. Yeah, I love that. Well, you do connect with so many stories from so many different areas. I don't know if everyone watching knows um, that you're in multiple cities um, because Brian's not just doing this for Pittsburgh. He's not just showcasing the stories that matter here, but in these different cities as well. So why don't you tell us a little bit about that? Well, we have publications and various types of media uh, products in, in Cincinnati in Columbus, in Cincinnati, and in, Cle and in uh, Cleveland. Uh, and those uh, products reach, in many cases, further than the city, the direct city that they're in. It tends to be the greater metropolitan version of whatever cities those are in um, that it reaches. In Cincinnati's case, we border Kentucky, and we're very close to Dayton. So we service in Cincinnati that though that uh, those three cities, um, but we have uh, in Pittsburgh we have newspaper called La Mega Nota, and we also have a digital version of La Mega Nota, which the La Mega Nota publishes monthly, but the digital version has uh, hourly news locally and around the world uh, in Cincinnati. Columbus and Cleveland, in addition to the newspaper and there are digital um, cells, we also have uh, radio. And what that uh, you know allows us to do is uh, program all kinds of uh, music, interviews, cultural exposés um, to strengthen what we do in the in the paper itself. Uh, so that's kind of um, those are the products that we that we offer. Uh, we also offer certain services that help people relate to 
the Latino community, like translation services, uh, things that help people, um, you know, figure out how they want to uh, market themselves. Uh, those are all part of the products that we have. And we'll get to this later probably, but um, we're, we're seeing uh, a flower beginning to bloom in Pittsburgh. Um, and that flower is our connection with the community. And as that blossoms more and more, we hope that we can bring more of our uh, products, uh, including some sort of radio to, to Pittsburgh in the near future. So Latino programming um, on the radio, uh, or if not on the radio, on an internet uh, radio station, some sort of radio presence there. So Brian, that is the perfect lead in. Why is this so important? You know, you guys publish in Spanish and I think a lot of corporations, small businesses, you know, even professionals, they're like, why do we need Spanish media here in Pittsburgh? And since I don't speak Spanish, why would I want to be a part of that? Extremely I mean, important. I know the answer, but I want you to yeah, tell yeah. us. <laughs> extremely, extremely important question. Um, and I'll say at the beginning of that, that we plan on incorporating a little more English into our um, media presence in Pittsburgh because um, we don't accept the stigma that's based on Latinos that if they don't speak Spanish, they're any less Latino. Um, that's a stigma that has to go away. And largely just the reality of living life in America puts families in a situation where they have to make some choices um, or where they're, they feel like they have to. And um, Spanish is, tends to not be the default if you're trying to, um, you know, succeed in corporate America or anything else, or even sometimes to get a job, being able to speak English is a make or break situation. Um, but uh, again, being a, uh, tenant of the people, being a publication that looks to um, speak to a particular population, we think it's extremely important that first and second generation Latinos have access to news locally like everyone else. And the only way that happens is for us to, um, you know, create publications that have a significant portion in Spanish uh, and that, you know, with the staff that understand Spanish and with a, uh, with a staff that understands the needs and desires of our community so that that can be communicated to the general uh, market and the general audience. Um, you know, we basically are a microphone for the people. We try to amplify um, those voices. And in addition to that, um, we also want a two-way street. We want people who are um, majority or completely Spanish speakers to feel like they have access um, to uh, Pittsburgh as a whole and that the cultural things that happen in Pittsburgh, the political happenings in Pittsburgh, um, the entertainment happenings that happen in Pittsburgh um, that may not be Latino centric still belong to you. They're still for you to take advantage of. They're still for you to learn about and learn from and participate in. And so the the, the bridge to those things, um, both for the community to feel like it has its own, but also for it to feel like the broader cultural spectrum is also theirs, um, is by this bridge of Spanish uh, language media. Brian, I'm sorry. I'm like sharing some things and people are asking me questions for you. I actually, I was just reading a few text messages. Some people were texting me saying, you know what, this is really great information. I didn't know that this existed. What type of stories are they looking for and who are they looking to connect with was the one I just specifically got. And you guys, if you're watching, please put your questions in the comments and that way there's no delay when I'm switching because I'm trying to read your text. I mean, of course, any way you can get, can get us questions. I'm glad you guys are interested, but it's much easier in the comments. So sorry about that, Brian. No problem. So uh, cheesy photo view. We're looking to talk about, talk, uh, discuss with, write about, advertise with you. Um, if your interests are genuinely to reach out to the Latino community, whether you're Latino or not, 
Um, what if your goal in uh, is to um, tell a story that benefits the community that we learn from? Um, if you're doing something that is noteworthy um, in the sense that there's things that people would draw interest in and learn from, if you're offering something to the community that helps them advance, then we want to talk to you. And we recognize that our um, kind of our, our circle of uh, influence or like how many people know us in Pittsburgh is really at its beginning stages. There's a, you know, there's a fraction of people who know who we are and we want to, exp we want that fraction to be bigger. <laughs> we want to be a bigger uh, piece of the pie in terms of you being conscious about us. And part of that is us reaching out to you and telling your stories. Um, so we look forward to those uh, opportunities. Will we write every story about every person? No, we won't. Um, does that mean that your story is not important? Of course not. Um, it's a monthly paper with 32 pages. Um, but um, we do look to increasingly include more examples of people and what they're doing and across uh, the diaspora of, of Latinidad. So we want to have more stories um, about more people who live in different countries in Central South America and the Caribbean. So Brian, specifically, if you were to talk about like the type of stories that you're looking for, are there like certain things that you want to make sure you cover every time? So like entertainment or a local news story, do you have kind of buckets that you always make sure that you want to um, cover? No. And that's actually the, uh, that's the power of what um, La Mega Nota is now. Um, it doesn't try to, it's not a newspaper. It's a political and cultural gazette. It's much more like a magazine in terms of it doesn't try to or feel that it needs to uh, be balanced in its coverage in terms of categories. We simply cover what we think is important in a given month. We could spend a whole month talking about education or a whole month, a whole edition talking about immigration or a whole issue talking about job opportunities. There's no, um, there's no uh, fixed uh, necessity in terms of what we cover. And we don't try to necessarily have balance. We try to have things that grab your attention, that make you interested, that you'll sit down at the restaurant or the doctor's office or take home and, you know, mull over. I'm really glad that you brought up um, jobs. Um, I get calls every day at the Hispanic Chamber about how can we connect um, with Spanish speakers? How can we connect with the Hispanic community? Can you tell us a little bit about how your reach and what effect you can have for companies and you know even nonprofits looking to connect with the community? Well, and this is one of the kind of magnificent beginnings uh, of partnership with the Hispanic Chamber in Pittsburgh because um, the, you, we know that employers are looking for uh, workers in all different levels of industry, um, both because of the gutting of the industry that um, happened with COVID, new uh, businesses that have arised coming out of COVID. COVID has destroyed and also uh, people have been uh, resourceful and found ways to create new things coming out of it. So all these things mean that employment fluctuates and now it's on and up. Um, our employment opportunities are on and up. So what we provide, at, since we're a place where people can go to get entertainment, to find out what's happening in the city, to be informed about um, political um developments. Um, while they're there, wow, it, they, it, this it also is a, is, a, is, a, is a growing employment guide. It's also a place you can go to find out well, what are my job opportunities. Um, and the more, and that's what we're building now. Uh, we're at the very beginning of, of building uh, what will become an employment section um, in our, you know, in our publication. Mm -hmm. 
So putting those things together, the distribution of it, um, the fact that more and more people will look for us. And when I say us, I mean the um, Pittsburgh Metropolitan Area Hispanic Chamber of Commerce and La Mega Nota. Um, what, the more they look for us online, on Facebook, and we have these um, the same advertisements that come from clients who want to find um, candidates for work, they'll be on all those platforms. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm glad that you brought up the partnership with the chamber. Um, I think it's a great thing to talk about. So, um, you know, I know Brian spoke a little bit, but I just want to highlight, you don't have to be Latino to come to our event. You don't have to be Latino to, um, you know, advertise with La Mega. The Hispanic population is the fastest grow growing segment in the United States. We're starting businesses um, at, a, at a rate of eight to one compared to other groups. Our purchasing power is growing exponentially instead of one or 2% um, like other groups. So if you're in business, if you're looking to connect with a community, promote an event. If you're missing the Hispanic community, you are missing an opportunity. So one of the ways that La Mega is working with the Hispanic Chamber is that they are offering our members a 30% discount, which is a huge difference so that especially our small businesses can reach you know, some of these places that some of the larger companies um, reach. And Brian, I would love to talk to you about why you offer that, what your positive agenda is. And I say that because the word agenda is kind of normally associated with negative. So what your positive agenda is <laughs> and, um, and why that means something to you. Yeah, so let me start by saying to um, Andrea Padilla that we would be interested in um, hearing about um, efforts that you've made around COVID-19. Um, that would be an interesting uh, story. Um, you can send that uh, proposal uh, to me at btaylor, b as in boy, taylor at lamegamedia.com and also to the following, who is our uh, chief editor. Her name is Elvia Skeens and her email address is e s as in Sam K E E N S at lamegamedia.com. So I wanted to get out, get that out there because uh, it is something of interest. We would like to um, talk about that. Okay. Uh, on why we um, have a special orientation towards trying to help small businesses um advance. Um, you know, again, we're a community, we're a community media company. Uh, and when people make efforts to try to, you know, create a business that is of use to the community, that's of use to us. And we want to make sure that we give every opportunity for that business to grow and thrive. Um, and sometimes uh, bigger companies might have a competitive advantage. Um, part, you know, one of those competitive advantages is more money in the bank. Uh, it's plain and simple. So uh, we try to give uh, small businesses a chance that sort of equals the playing field a little bit so that they can um, take advantage, you know, of the tools that, that we offer. Uh, so that's really at the heart of it. Um, you know, over the course of, uh, since La Mega Media, um, began a couple of years ago, uh, we've been able to give, uh, over a million dollars in, uh, combinations of, you know, cash donations, um, and, um, discounts, uh, or special offers. Uh, so those things matter. And I think that the businesses that take advantage of it, um, you know, will find themselves able to more compete uh, and, and be a voice and be a, you know, a place that people would be interested in, um, you know, going to buying from um, in an easier way. And it takes less of a hit uh, off your finances. So Brian, I want to talk a little bit about um, our event back in, oh, it's already been two months. That was our 
Is that a May event, June event? Sorry, guys, there's so much going on. But we had an event at the Rivers Club, and it was wonderful. They hosted us. They provided the space, the food. Um, but Brian came, and he was one of our quick speakers, and he talked a little bit about that community impact. And La Mega gave a prize um, so that one of our businesses could win some free advertising to kind of get a taste. And it just worked out so well that they were already looking at it. You know, they were, um, they had a smaller budget and they were able to get started. So this is something consistent that La Mega is doing to reach the community. They're working with us to give that discount. They're giving, um, you know, prizes sometimes when we need them for events. They're connecting with you for stories to make sure that our community stories are told. Our community news is getting out there. Um, and then they're connecting with us in another way that um, the Hispanic Chamber now has a page in La Media, La Mega Media here in Pittsburgh, La Mega Nota, sorry. <laughs> um, Brian, I know that we pulled um, the magazine up here. This is one of the stories that were covered, but do you wanna go really quickly just to the chamber page so we can give people kind of an idea what to look for? Um, and this is something that's just a part of the partnership to help make sure that our communities' voices are heard, that our programs that we need to get out there um, are, you know, being talked about. Um, so this is specifically about looking for mentors. Um, and Brian, do you want to talk a little bit about how our partnership was formed and why, why again, it's important to La Mega for not only the Hispanic Chamber in Pittsburgh, but in your other cities? Sure. Um, the Hispanic Chambers in most cities uh, came into existence because of a need, um, because the chambers of commerce um, in the cities where Latinos have lived um, uh, haven't been fun previously. We'll say were not fundamentally institution which institutions in which Latinos could get a leg up, uh, could take advantage of whatever offers that being a member of a, his, of a chamber would give you. Um, nor necessarily were the perspectives that these burgeoning business owners had uh, were um, valued on the level that they should be. So Hispanic Chambers formed that gave a voice to those concerns and allowed people to um, collectivize them and communicate them and show their relative weight um, collectively. So it was only be natural that if, you know, a newspaper or a media company that is in a city uh, is looking to uh, connect with um, the community as a whole, um, one sector of that is the business community. And, um, you know, people who um, are behind the, the grocery stores that we see uh, and the other institutions um, that we see that were able to form themselves in the Latino community. So that's kind of, it, it, to, to us, it's just a logical step that we would be natural partners in trying to figure out how to leverage both of our strengths to be uh, resources for the community. And in any city where that chamber is truly a resource for the community, it's just a natural connection. Uh, I think that's why Pittsburgh, um, especially in the most recent iteration of the Hispanic Chamber, it we just you know we hit it off because <laughs> uh, our goals are the same. We're both talking about helping people. Uh, I can see in the different interviews that you do and some of the different um, events that you have and some of the causes that you back um, that uh, we indeed uh, are on the same page. So better to get. Yes, no, that is the perfect answer. Just so you know, my little one is coming. We might hear him a little bit, <laughs> but that's kind of what the work from home thing is, right? Um, do you want to talk a little bit about the, the contributions that Latinos are making in the economy and in the communities outside of our own? Sure. Well, I don't pretend to be an expert on that, um, but... Um, you know, figure after figure shows that the impact that Latinos have on the economy is ever growing. 
um, and is the one um, category that exponentially is growing of recent. Um, you know, for myself, um, I feel like the uh, what people of Latino descent who live in the United States contribute to, you know, America, as it were, um, is so much greater than just um, money and economics. Uh, I think there's a very deep cultural history. Um, I think that the, the the links of you know, as somebody who is also black, um, you know, there is a substantial uh, piece of black history in Latino America that comes here. Um, so there are deep, deep contributions that I think Latinos have made to the society, including um, you know the. Uh, tradition of resistance and social struggle. Those are part of what, um, you know, make their way here um, from other experiences that people have. But this is a business. So from a business point of view, um, certainly um, Latinos are part of driving the economy. Um, so, uh, and I think more and more uh, businesses are recognizing that, which is why you're seeing more and more ads in Spanish. Like I was watching, I can't remember what I was watching. And now I can't remember whether it was Hulu, Netflix. They're not paying us anyway. So <laughs> <laughs> whoever it was, um, this streaming program, the short streaming TV program, they had a commercial that was in Spanish. And it's not like it knew that I spoke Spanish. It just happened to be a commercial that was done in Spanish for the U.S. audience which I thought was just another indicator of the fact that um, whether you like it or not, uh, we are here. <laughs> and we're not going anywhere. We're just growing. And I, I love that you pointed that out because so Google actually spent, I think it was $5 billion. Um, or, no, that's totally wrong. That's totally wrong. I'll find the statistic. I'll put it in the comments. However, there was an insane amount. Oh, it was between Google and uh, Coca-Cola. The number, the amount of money that they spent trying to figure out how to reach the Latino population. And they couldn't crack it. So they started putting things out in half English, half Spanish. I don't know if you guys noticed, but when they did the names on the bottles, a lot of the billboards would have one like Latino name and one, you know, Caucasian sounding name, another black sounding name, you know, they would put them all together, but they would always include Latinos, even in regions that we historically don't think of as being Latino areas. Um, and Familia was on there. You know, we weren't seeing any other languages being included. So, you know, we're here and they're starting to recognize this, but they don't know how to reach the population because as you guys know, Hispanics are very diverse. Um, you know, we can be black, we can be Asian, we can be white, you know, there's all different kinds of Latinos. So, and then the generational gap, I think is also so huge because when you're coming um, as the, I, I'm not sure, Brian, you have to tell me, is the first generation the the ones who came here and were natives to somewhere else, or is the first generation the ones who were born here? Which one is uh, it? First generation are people who come here from somewhere else. Okay, someone was trying to tell me I was first generation. I was like, I don't feel first generation. I have to be second generation because I didn't come here, right? I was born here. I'm a Colombian citizen, but I wasn't born in Colombia. So yeah, that's interesting. But that gap is so huge. And things like La Mega and the Hispanic Chamber are just such easy ways to reach that community instead of doing all this research. You know, we've kind of already built this. <laughs> um, so yeah, I think it's just the ideal way to reach out. You guys are already reaching. I, I think that the reach here in Pittsburgh is about 23,000 is it? Is that correct? More or less, yes. Yeah, and then in other markets as well. So there's so much potential um, for just reaching out with your story or with your ad. But Brian, what else are you guys looking for? I know you're looking to build here in Pittsburgh. So for those watching who wanna know how they can get involved or you know, what other pieces are missing right now? Okay, so 
Um, there's a couple of things. One is we're all the door is always open for people who are interested in, interested in writing. Um, our our what we're really beginning to do now is put together a team on the ground um, to actually uh, sell the news, sell the the media, um, the paper, our digital um, presence there. Uh, we really are looking for people who want to uh, be a part of that team and uh, become account managers or, you know, find opportunities to link businesses with the community through um, our newspaper and our digital um, presence. Um, and the more we're able to establish that team and cement it, the closer we get to our goal to bring uh, radio to uh, to Pittsburgh, that's really kind of the the roadmap. Um, you know, there's more and more interest uh, from local businesses uh, and institutions to advertise in La Mega Nota, and the more that is continued, sustained, and growing, the more it makes uh, the case for what we know is uh, is the desire uh, for people there, which is to have both a newspaper, uh, a viable website, and um, a radio presence. Um, so you can, you know, be driving around and be listening to uh, the newest and the coolest music um, across different genres of interest to the Latino community. Let's let's discuss for a second why something like a radio or a newspaper slash magazine, why is that representation so important for the community and for the region, Brian? Well, so not necessarily in the order of importance because I'm coming from the hip, but um, pride, pride in ourselves. That That's a, an, a um, not an important piece of this entire thing that, um, that we have a publication that centers on kind of our central interests um, that come from a prerogative that may not be 100% ours, but a prerogative that uh, that we recognize and that comes from us. Um, that's an important feature uh, of what it means to have a publication in Spanish in the city. Um, one that is a professional one. Um, because any person or, inst or group of people who make an effort to put out some sort of publication so that the community have something and has something in Spanish, you know, I salute all those all those efforts. Um, but there's a difference between that um, and a professional level publication that is on par with the with the English language. Uh, you know, versions of them. And that's what we strive to be. That's what we are. But if you really say you are that, then you're constantly trying to be better because that's what um, professionalism is. So uh, we want to have a publication uh, and we think that people want a publication that they can look at and say, you know, my culture produces this. This is of me. Um, and you know, I'm proud that this exists in my city and I can hold it up next to anything else and say, yes, this is the Spanish language version of that. Um, that's what that's what we think is important. Uh, and that's why it's extremely important to have such a thing uh, as that uh, in the region. And it also will inspire other efforts to do other things outside of media. Um, it gives confidence that it can be done. The owner of our company um, is Latino. Both of our owners, we have two owners, they're both Latino. One's a man, one's a woman. Um, and both are leaders of the company. So it's just uh, these things give inspiration to people to, to go off on their own um, adventures and, and, their own, and make their own creations. And I think too, you know, representation 
matters, especially I know so many of us, not myself, my mom really wanted me to learn Spanish, but so many um, have come from homes that have said, you know, we don't want you to learn Spanish. We don't want you to represent the culture as much because we don't want you to be discriminated against. You know, I hope that's a thing of the past, but we have a whole group of people who felt like they couldn't express themselves, who didn't even have, you know, a radio station for their kids to listen to in Spanish. They didn't have a paper to show their kids current events in Spanish and it makes it feel removed from culture. You know, it makes it feel like it's not acceptable. That representation and knowing that that's something public makes it feel like it's not just okay, but it's, you know, even better that there's a community because here in Pittsburgh, I think one of the major barriers that we've always had is there's no centralized location historically that is just Latino. Now, as we know, the Beachview Brookline area is kind of developing into that, um, but not nearly to the extent that other cities have this. So to have a central media point, um, I think is so, so, so important to have the community there and feel like, you know, we are a community. So thank you so much for, you know, being the print version of that as well as your, you know, online social media things. We we really appreciate all of the work that you're doing. Um, before we go, I want to add, so before Brian adds his last thoughts, anybody who has any questions, I know I have text messages, you guys, but I'm not going to look until after. I will get back to you or put them in the comments. But if you want to ask, ask right over here in the comments. And Brian, what would you like people to leave with as their final thoughts about our chat, about La Mega, about the Hispanic community, whatever you would like? Um. Well, above all, um, I don't want to keep people long because this may be over lunch. You may look at this later and be trying to cook dinner. So I'm not going to go on and on. But I will say this. Um, one of our slogans is tan Latina como tú. Um, and that's true through and through and through in everything we do. Um, and and, and our, it's part of our central mission to be of the community and to reflect, um, you know, those interests. Um, here's another one, which which is not necessarily uh, a direct um, slogan of the company, but I think it captures how we see and why we're in Pittsburgh. It's because we believe. Um, we believe that there is a growing Latino community there. We believe that it has a voice that deserves to be heard, and we believe that we're up to the task uh, in helping make that happen. Um, so if you believe in that, um, then we're probably a good person to get to know. and we, we look forward to getting to know you. Thank you, Brian. Casa has a question for you. I was starting to type a response, but I think that it might just be better for you to answer. They wanted to know if someone has a proposal for a story. Um, I did put a little bit up in the comments, guys. Brian's email address. Um, you can always send it to the chamber and I will make sure that it gets to the right place as well. Um, but they wanted to know if you have a proposal for a story, what should you include in that email? Uh, well, I mean, I think so. Let me just say this in the beginning, uh, just because uh, if you know me, you know, I'm or when you get to know me. I tend to be blunt about things. I don't uh, sugarcoat. Uh, so in that spirit, um, I just want to, you know, let it be known that while we will cover and do cover a lot of stories about things that are happening in the community, there's a line that's that's a very. Uh, you know, it's a fine line um, between covering things of interest in the community and covering um, interesting developments and things that people are doing, uh, ideas that they're creating, businesses that they're creating, um, printing those things and printing what really should be paid advertisements. There's a there's a line there. I'm not saying that 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 line has to be, in, you know, found in real life. It's not a, a hard and fast thing. Um, but in order for us to be able to continue to exist and put this information out, um, you know, there has to be a level of compensation for businesses who seek 
to be promoted. Um, so that line is something that we, you know, work out in real time. Um, but when you're sending um, any kind of request, whether you're a business or an individual or whatever, um, you should include the things that, you know, a brief synopsis of, you know, who you are, not paragraphs and paragraphs, but like, um, this is who I am. This is what I think my story is, or this is what I think is the story that's important to the community. It doesn't even have to be a story about you. There may be something else that you feel needs to be covered or should be covered. Like, man, I just went to this community center and they are just amazing. Can we do a piece on this particular program that my kid went to or whatever? That's how you can come to us with proposals. It's, it's really saying who you are, first, first off, briefly, and then describing what you feel the story is. Because to us, it's not just a question of publishing information. We want to publish a story and a narrative that's interesting to people. So try to basically um, make that clear in the proposal that you send or in the note that you send via email. I don't know if that helps. Yes, I'm actually typing right now. So I just put, you know, let Brian know who you are, what the story is and how to reach you. And like you said, that's not a guarantee. But if it's something important that's going on in the community, odds are um, definitely in your favor. And like you said, you know, if you're a business, it it is a paid ad to put an ad in the paper, of course, because they have to run it. They have to pay their writers. We want them putting money back into the community. Um, they're doing donations for community items such as the Hispanic Chamber of Commerce. So, you know, when you're paying, that is going to a bunch of Latinos to keep our community going, to keep our ecosystem going. Um, and like I said before, they are offering a 30% discount for Hispanic Chamber members. So for a lot of people, especially who want ads over the year, that will that discount will way more than cover your membership costs. So that's definitely something to think about. But Brian, I learned a lot today about La Mega, you know, why you guys do things. I hope that our audience did as well. You know, what your reach is, how you're making a positive impact. There are just so many things that I hope people take away today. But at the end of all of it, I just want to tell you how grateful we are for all of the work that you do. And I personally am very great, grateful for your friendship as well. No, I, likewise. And I really look forward to myself learning more about the ever-changing and ever-growing, you know, Latino population in Pittsburgh. I lived there for several years. And when I live there versus now is, I won't say it's night and day, but the pre the Latino presence, the stamp is substantially bigger. And uh, that makes me happy. So I look forward to learning more with you and with everybody listening uh, or watching. Uh, you know, about this new, wonderful uh, Pittsburgh, Latino Pittsburgh. Latino Pittsburgh, what a great way to end. Well, thank you again, Brian. We will talk to you soon. Um, and thank all of you guys for tuning in. This is something that we do weekly, the Latino Pittsburgh Digital Speaker Series every Wednesday at 12 p.m. I do want to add, we are looking for mentees for our mentoring program. We've got 25 amazing mentors lined up. We're looking for people who, um, Latinos who are new to the city, they're looking to make a change in career, maybe they want to, um, you know, move up to a new position, start a business, but really looking for people who are in transition and need guidance. And it's based on the three cups of coffee model, um, which is something that you can Google. But so it's low, um, you know, you don't have to commit too much, too many hours, but high reward because it's structured. We connect you with an amazing mentor. So if you guys are, are looking to learn more about that, you can visit our website, which I will give in a minute. Um, but again, I just want to thank you all for being here. Um, I'm clicking around. I don't know if you guys know, but I actually control like all of these things around. So when you guys are texting me or putting in comments um, and I'm a little bit delayed, I want to apologize. It's just me over here, but I really appreciate your patience, your time, your attention and your membership. So the Latino Pittsburgh Digital Speaker Series is an initiative of the Pittsburgh Metropolitan Area Hispanic Chamber of Commerce. Its goals are to share relevant information, inspire growth and foster opportunities 
opportunity. Speakers and workshops include community leaders and members, as well as other individuals and programs that have a positive impact on not only the Hispanic community, but the Pittsburgh region at large. If you'd like to learn more, please visit our website at www.pmahcc.org. Thanks, guys. See you next time. Bye.